Yeah. Oops, I'm back to you, Attila. Yeah. One more time. Let me start over. And we are recording this for everyone just so we have a record of it. Are you able to see the screen or did it get disconnected? Mine got disconnected. Can you see that screen? Yes, we can see yours on YouTube. All right. So this is heading north towards Bashes, straight from Diné College. What you see is a trail hugging a fence uh, right down the center. So it is divided. Um, but the, um, the width of that trail is probably about two, two to three feet. Is that all really? It looks wider than that. It could possibly be wider in some spots. Um, but in the narrowest areas, it's about two to three. You could fit about one runner. And 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 uh, Leonard, um, is this where you were talking about? One side is um, um, executive order. What one's into you? The other one is still. Um... No, that I think the fence line is the track for the the net college. I know they okay. have about fifty acres, and most of it okay. they're not okay. using. So. That's not the dividing line. It's on the left side. OK, we'll look at that when we get back to the map. All right, so continuing here. But that's all executive order. I think in, in it. And then here's where we come up to the road that goes to Diné College. There's a lot of space possibly for parking, but there's a lot of access that goes through that area. Um, and that access, um, Daniel. Access. Yes, you'll see cars go through there too sometimes. Yes. See where, where that trailer is right there on the left side? Uh-huh. That was used by the emergency management. So that little acreage right there is, I think their acreage, but that can be transferred because they're not utilizing that anymore. Okay. But this is where the main, um, main access point to Bashes goes. The link up from that dirt trail to the pavement, and then they cross over to the main road, Route 9, and then cross over. So you'll see a lot of people use this route right here to get to Bashes. So is there a sidewalk from this point going forward north to Route 9? No. OK, so we might want a recommendation of we don't want to dump people out on a roadway. So we might need to think about a, you know, a path along here or a sidewalk along there. Yes. Okay, so this, this at this point the video turns around and we're going to go south again. Now this this trail right here is probably about the size of a car width. Okay. A one thing car. It's really wide and you'll see a lot of people on it as well. But this is going back towards NTU's campus now. Now, if you could stop it here, Attila. Uh, the trail veers off into two different directions. Uh, the one we mapped is the one that goes straight uh, to the right. Yes, and that links up to NTU's current campus. Uh, and there's a gateway there, and there's an entrance. But if we were to take a left, um, that's uh, part of the map that when we go back to the trails map, um, it crosses over. So there's we're doing one big loop with this drone footage, but that trail ends up crossing over and meets up back to where Diné College is. So there's a center, there's a center uh, trail that goes through this big old loop and they actually have a, they have an old bench up there. So it seems like at one point somebody had put a bench in that area. Is there a fence line here? Yes, um, but it's kind of torn down. That's why you see the different um, trails. If you go to the top left corner of the um, video screen, you see two that veer off back up to toward. Yeah, those two. 
they veer up and then meet back up. So, there, you know, there's different access points that go to the area just because the uh, fence is down in certain areas, but there's that's an the, actual gateway. That's the fence that divides your trust land and your executive order in. I see. Because on the east side, no, the west side is all into you on track. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do to get a, a, a legal a legal crossing through that, Leonard, we put a, a kissing gate or some sort of a opening through that. Well, I think the BIA is the one that put up that fence. I'm not sure. So you may have to contact them. OK. All right. Then we continue up the uh, loop. It goes on to NTU's land and then you have a straightaway. Now up until the back of this building, it's rather flat. Yes, but once you hit there, there's an incline and that has to be more than eight degrees. So I'm not sure if working in those trails to our left is a way to get around that incline or um, linking back before you even get up to NTU's um, land. Um, where we we're talking about the trail that crosses to the left if that's an alternative way to get up and then you know get around that steep incline but basically that section at the top of the screen the last inch or so that you see on the video that's a, a incline um, that might be an obstacle that we might face looks like that could be a way around there though right okay but you can see the defense line that's the dividing line the boundary line Okay. okay. Now, once you reach the top of the uh, trail of that little incline, there, NTU is going to be putting up a biology building right there to the right on this little mesa. A so biology? just to the right of that, yeah, a metrology building. Oh. Um, so they're going to have some infrastructure there. Um, it'd be nice if somehow we could tie the trail into it because parking is going to be a challenge. They're going to probably have to figure out those types of things of how are they going to access it. But, um, you know, they have that available in that area. Um, in addition to that land in the past, there are some workout stations um, situated somewhere along that route on top of the hill. Um, that look like they haven't been used, that they're just sitting there and they're getting, you know, splinters and things like that. <laughs> so it looks like somewhere in the past, someone tried to put up workup stations at the top of that hill. Daniel. Yes. That, did you say biology building? Uh, met metrology. Metro. Is there any plans already or is designs done or just? Yeah, they're, they're just waiting on it to go. They were saying maybe within the next couple months. Okay. And then you continue, and then this is all surfaced with gravel, light gravel, I would say. This Start last writing, starting right here? Yes. Okay. And it kind of completes that last portion of where we started filming. And it connects up with the other entryway to NTU's campus right there, as you see our cars. Um, yeah, and then that's the most used connector within Crown Point is going right there from right to left. That's where a lot of people come through campus that are just passing through either students or community members. So oftentimes they'll cut through there for, you know, coming from the chapter house or coming from the housing to the left, going to the high school. Um, you'll see probably the most traffic on our map that we detailed when we were asking people to pass through. Where do you come through? And then we didn't complete the drone footage, but if we were to continue going straight, that's where it goes on top of a mesa where our internet tower is and it connects back down to the other side of the chapter house. Uh -huh. So that's where it does get a little rugged. Um, it does have a car trail. Um, but then that would complete that last loop you see within the map that we provided. So. OK, so I'm going to. Uh, let's go to Google Earth. Hey, are, we, are we visible on Google Earth? Uh, no. There we go. Okay. 
so again the the land so this is so this is where you're saying this the drone would start here cross and make that loop there so you actually have a exactly. fixed rate in here too don't wouldn't you i'm sorry so you were just saying the drone finished is this access point here yes and then you have this path coming across this way and dropping down and one of these drops down to the chapter house yes okay so it could either go on top of the hill if you keep on taking that straight um this way keep going down there yeah and then it goes up on top of the hill if you just keep it kind of going and then it like a j air, um motion and then you go on top of it and then um once you're on top then it drops down yeah so if you if you're to continue that where your hand is um just a little bit to the north that's where the dirt road goes up oh right here oh, no no i'm sorry to your left okay well there is a dirt road yeah that's the thing that goes all the way to the top and then it's on the, the tower top. so okay yeah. so, and it looks like there's a pathway coming off of the top here too that's a rough trail probably okay. people would use it it's kind of scary but if you were to keep on following that dirt trail um to the left of the screen it then drops below um down to the chapter yeah so i see um you know kind of thinking about um if this is the main access point it seems like this would might be a logical i don't know which is better to pathway down to the chapter house here yeah that's more accessible if you don't want to have a steep incline yeah so there's a good area to start off right there at or somewhere around here okay all right so um could you quickly touch on some of the key comments you heard from um the comp uh, the uh, focus groups and otherwise daniel force yeah so um as mentioned there was a lot of use um by the community not only from students but community members as well we have an elder who used to walk along this trail to go get groceries as well he would kind of his big problem was the fences um but in addition it is heavy use for exercise you'll see a lot of people were mentioning running on it one of the workbooks that was submitted said it's a nice three to four mile loop depending on which route you take so instead of just doing the big loop they might do the crossover right there in the middle and then do another loop you know so you could do multiple miles based off of what loops you do um, but they also said there is some party spots back in there so there are some hazards of drinking and um, unwanted activity in the area <laughs> at certain times um, they mentioned the housing area right there where your hand cursor is that there is a lot of people who walk those sidewalks as well but there is the problem with the dogs so that's where they see some problems with um, dogs within the area um, okay. But yeah, they, um, they smoke and then they drink in the area. Uh, they mentioned that there's not no lighting, um, so the low red, the low impact lighting might be a good solution in this area. Um, some of the people that worked from NTU that would walk between the places, you know, one person. This wasn't in the report, but they mentioned getting their uh, shin busted open from a divider just because they couldn't see. Um, okay. it, there was mentions of a lot of flooding within the area. So there's some um, high risk areas um, down towards Diné College and then up where the drone starts of there being a lot of um, flooding in that area. So if somehow interventions could take place, you know, within the area, whether it's, you know, doing the healing circle or, you know, if we're going to be doing something with the IHS, possibly doing community gardens in the area to help circumvent that. Mm. But there is some um, uh, flooding that takes place that affects the trails. And that was documented by Felicia and David as well. So is it is the water running down the trail? The trail's actually turning into drainage drainage facilities? Yeah, there are certain spots along the area. Okay. And that's kind of a given because this whole area is within a floodplain. <laughs> NT was built on that. And this was an old <laughs> land strip. Okay. Um, so that's uh, one of the things that needs to be addressed. But one of the things that NTU has been in discussions with is how do we mitigate a lot of that flooding too? And I think one of the reasonable options is doing that kind of in layers, doing swells, mix, mixing that with 
trail type of intervention, things like that. So mm -hmm. there would be a good opportunity from the community at large to somehow work on the flooding, somehow incorporating the trails into it as well. Leonard, did you have something to say? Uh, no, but um, we were working with the um, water resources in Winter Rock on the flooding issue. We went after some funding, but we didn't get it, but we're going to keep trying. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is there a report on that uh, flooding issue and what your plan is for that, Leonard? Yeah, there was a report done for Crown Point, Chimley, um, different areas on the Navajo Reservation. Um, I do have a, a copy of that. And I think NTU also has a copy. NTU did a study too on their own, own campus, right, Daniel? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Most I think likely. that Dr. Guy was involved in that. I think they do have a, their own studies on their campus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are there other, besides um, besides the development of, of, of a facility right here, right, Daniel? Uh -huh. Are there any other plans for any other development on top? They have plans for a um, 300 student three story dorm that's north of the trail. Um, probably within that area of the dirt patch. So to your left, left, left. It has to be on into you. Right there, right there. That's kind of where they have a three three story 300 room do uh, 300 student dorm. Okay. But besides that, nothing else has been planned besides the metrology building and this. We'll just put a color around that. While you're doing this, I think the other main thing that came from comments in regards to this trail it's just kind of the access and what's surrounding um, and how it could link to different areas. Since it's so centrally located, they're seeing this as a valuable trail and linking to bashes and IHS, but then also eventually connecting over to the high school, but also connecting over to CCS and the chapter. So there's a lot of talk about how this trail is centrally located and how it could kind of serve as a funnel to get to the different areas. They had mentioned this road by NTU that's kind of to the left of that um, dorm. That one right there, uh, I'm sorry, the actual road outside of NTU's okay. campus, that it's um, not well lit. This was before NHA put in solar um, lighting. So going north from that housing area, there's solar lighting that way, but then towards the south going towards um, NTU's um, camp campus, it's not lit. So those are some other comments is that there's opportunity. Yeah, that's that's a scary area that we're saying. Um, so somehow okay, so and our connector trail we showed the other day was coming right down from here. Yes. OK. So if that area could somehow be addressed right there, that could be the connector to the trail they were saying. So use the existing yeah right away to connect the two things together. OK, right. I'm just going to capture that on here. Um, and there is a sidewalk here, right? Yes. So that might connect us here to the dorm, which then might connect you over here somehow. Um, I'm just going to write. From Mesa. Education. OK, and then. Um, lighting needed. On what what's the name of that road? Chaco Road. Chaco? Uh, hang on, it's there. It's got a. Come on, Mr. VP. I'll find it. OK, lighting needed on. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's point road. road. It's Lower Point Road. Lighting it on on lower half of Lower Point Road. 
That's it's going to make that street address. <laughs> what? That's NTU street address. They should know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that shows a connector. Okay. Just to just to have that as a reference point for us. So then, um, the classification on this is the big question. After that, we had some. So we know we just heard it that there's a, a lot of traffic connecting here to to the bashes and and the hospitals. So we 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 have some sidewalk issues here that are got to be addressed or trail connector to the street. Then we're gonna have to have some pedestrian crossing issues here, either hawk signals or um, zebra striping with signage somewhere. Uh, at some logical places here to get to these two locations because I don't see anything on the road that indicates that pedestrians would be using it. Yeah, and that's that was raised also a few times. I'm not sure if it was in here, but there was some um, community members mentioning how that's dangerous and they preferred like an overpass or something along those lines. Um, I know in different communities they've used things like the roundabout and or, you know, yeah shortening the road but they mentioned something should be there to help cross people over because it gets really dangerous okay and we have sidewalks along nine it looks like on both sides yes uh, are there it appears to be along um across from bashes are there sidewalks um no or is it just curb it might just be curb but all of those dirt paths right there, they're heavily used. So there could be opportunities for a path on the south side. Yeah, it looks like there's so a whole, the whole road, road frontage way right here is turned into an informal pathway network. Yes. Okay. And the other thing that was mentioned in this um, mother had mentioned they use the loop at IHS. So I'm not sure if that could somehow be tied in. There's a little loop at the IHS that people walk. On their little compound the other is the um, hotel that leonard was mentioning which is going to be to the left of bashes the so hotel's somehow not here i believe so leonard yeah five acres right on the west side of bashes or the Navajo shopping center and he mentioned that there's a nice trail loop up there eventually so maybe in the second phase or whatever we could explore you know, yeah, you can see it. Stuff. You can see the old road uh, going northeast right there. That can be used for a trail. I just doubled the size of it. <laughs> but we get the point. It's, that's 10 acres of land right there. Okay. Hotel. All right. And where was that loop? The, mm -hmm. the IHS loop? Uh, just kind of on the outskirts of that little plot. Somewhere in here? You could kind of see that it's right along the road and then up along the road and then they kind of just walk their paths so it kind of goes into their parking lot and their roads okay. but oh, i see all right you can, so yeah. that could be a really nice little fitness path, a separate little fitness path that might be someplace you wouldn't think about putting some uh you know stretching balancing type uh outdoor equipment and then you know part of your messaging is when there's family members are waiting for a a patient for testing the family instead of waiting in the waiting room and getting more sick they could be out walking on the pathway mm -hmm. that's where they're going to put the um uh c store and laundromat in here yeah three acres three and a half acres so you could while you're instead of watching the the dryer spin around and around you could be walking that instead right well if it's still there yeah <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fight for well, it I <laughs> okay all right so uh there's an issue for sidewalks that would you know if we need a sidewalk here and then along either one of these two places to get get to these facilities on maybe on both sides did you guys say there's already a sidewalk plan in place that would is addressing some of this stuff or not not that i know of okay All right, so I'm just uh, just for our purpose because I think we want to get uh, you know there's a hotel here, so we might want a uh, sidewalk. So I'm just going to mark it. I think it's important to show this. 
Wow. One thing they did mention that will probably be on there is more street lights. They wanted to do the whole loop from this area up to the high school, down to the post office, and then back up towards the other entrance to Crown Point. So I think eventually they were really talking about having street lighting heavily present along that route. So we'll do a sidewalk there to there for now. Um, you mean light pollution? Well, if the if, if you uh, confirm, if you can find, if you meet the intent of the Night Sky Protection Act in New Mexico, all the lighting has to point down and it would not be an issue. So if it's done correctly, um, I think it can work. Yeah, I was just kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, it's a valid point. So we say another sidewalk here. Um, but I think this is a good development within this trail system just because, you know, while our focus is on the education trail, a big thing that came out of the community is how does it connect to these main centers up here? Right. And I think that's where health comes into play too. How could this be incorporated with IHS and then a lot of the stuff that they got going on? Yeah, because you, you know, you, uh, you can't, I just saw a picture of some way the sidewalk ends and we'll know where the big sign sidewalk ends. So we got to, if you have a trail, it's got to connect to somewhere and you can't just have them die off in the middle of nothing. So we have three potential sidewalks in here. So I like where it seems so far. I'll make the hotel better. I'll clean all this up for the next version. So classification is our next thing we want to quickly touch on. Um, is that available on your screen now, though? Class barrier free, improved, natural? Is that popping up or not? No. Ay, ay, ay. It's screen share. Got to do it different every single time. Um, now, we have class yes. A, class B, and class C. We covered these last time as a refresher. A class A trail is a barrier-free trail. So if um, we're thinking about walking, bike riding, mobility assist, so a senior walking the grocery store and walking back home would benefit greatly from a barrier-free trail, or a senior walking with uh, preschoolers and others that are tagging along because they have to would benefit from barrier-free trails. Uh, an improved Surface means that it's um, it, it's uh, free of most obstacles, trip hazards, erosion, uh, incised or entrenched trails. It's got good outslope. It's good uh, crown surfacing. It's wide enough for uh, people to pass easily. It's wide enough for a bike to pass a stroller. Um, but it says it's you know it's a heavily traveled route. And with education trail was saying there's 22 points on your scale, um, that should probably be, you know, an improved trailer better. And then the natural primitive we decided was, we agreed that it was pretty much the 18 to 24 inches wide, natural surface, really fitting into what you might see at TP Trail, but not necessarily what you might see in this area here. However, we also decided that you could do a barrier free loop and we're going to go back to sharing the map again. You can do a barrier fleet free loop. Um, or a barrier free segment could be maybe connecting here to there and then an improve could be these other pieces that maybe aren't as much transportation oriented. So different ways to play that out. So or maybe it's improved from here down here and this part, and then this other part would be a different thing. So thoughts on what makes sense is how do you want a uh, classification for surfacing on this? <laughs> well, I think with the flooding, it, a big part of it has to be improved, at least on that south or on the east side. So a lot of the part that you already kind of went over right there yep and then even down towards 
the connection by the chapter, all of that kind of needs remediation. Okay. But if it's like you were right, it did have 22 points. So over half the people did use that little north side, that area right there. So if that has to be a barrier free, I think it would be nice for that section. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I know that our workbooks and a lot of the feedback was to keep it natural. Well, n natural, I mean, yes. So uh, natural could be that crush refined surface. And so one of the things you might want to play with is, is if we tested something, maybe we we took a section of trail, maybe it's all by the chapter house, so it's a common place. And maybe you went down here and you um, built, 25 feet of improved trail and 25 feet of, of barrier free trail to show the difference and they still would look natural so maybe that's an experiment we do um so people can know okay here's what we mean by these different trail surfaces mm -hmm. so you can see that um barrier free it really you really want to limit the maintenance on that so if it's gonna get a lot of traffic you know i don't think you have to do asphalt because that's not what your community is all about and you don't want urbanization as much you want it as little as possible but you can probably stabilize that with that resin based material to make it firm and stable and if you take care of the drainage problems leading into it like you know here i'm sure that's a drainage problem that's a drainage problem that's a drainage problem crossing it um take care of those things you can probably uh and then have drainage along this, you can probably have a good, st strong, stable surface that would not um, be unattractive or, you know, uninviting to your community. Mm -hmm. So, other thoughts, to, you know, is there, a, is there a consensus on barrier free, at least on this part to connect? And then the question is, if someone needed barrier free access, could they actually get from this community along this roadway and get all the way here barrier free? So it's really about that entire route. The first mile and the last mile, as they say in the transportation world, what's that la first and last mile like? Or in our case, first 100 yards or last 100 yards. Mm -hmm. So any, any uh, comments from the participants here today on barrier free and I'm going to I'm going to just take off. Um, so this second PC that just that's clicked on and off is a half mile segment of trail. So that's um, this whole piece is a half mile. Yeah, I'm with uh, Caitlin. She said that she likes barrier free. Um, one of the things that came up also within the focus group is that there were some people who use strollers uh -huh. and they said it would be nice to have something that could work with them on this trail. So well, parents. Yeah, either barrier free or improved because of the width would uh, accommodate strollers. Either double wide or triple wide strollers, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. So would you see the need for a whole half mile barrier free all the way down to this point? Is that more logical people would access from here or you need both places? And would someone that wants to walk to Bashes, would they would they come from here and go this way or would they likely stay along the roadway and go that way? Or would they come from over here and cross this way to get there? Right. <laughs> Um, we're K Caitlin was mentioning through the neighborhoods. There's more dogs, so people try to avoid those. Okay. Um, so it would probably be used from both areas. I know within one of the students said that he felt safe, uh, unsafe going through that neighborhood, and it wasn't until he found somebody to give him a ride that he kind of got around that. So I think there is some opportunities where they would use that back trail as opposed to going through those neighborhoods. Just because you're dealing with cars with no sidewalks, you're dealing with the dogs and all that jazz. So so maybe you need barrier free. So the you know, these these are just the typical um 
your typical design neighborhoods where there's no access, uh, no walkable access in or out. So if you're living here, you've got to go out this way back in here to get to the trail right yes. now. Right. And there's so that, a fence and there's a fence right there on the other side of them. Yeah. So that's all. So they have no access to the trail from there. So I see. I almost kind of see barrier free from here to at least here and maybe down to here to two points and then to here, but not down to the chapter house. Mm hmm. Thoughts on that? I have a question. Um, what is what does barrier free mean? Does that mean like no fencing? Um, barrier free means that if you were uh, confined to a wheelchair or mobility device or had a recent hip replacement or knee replacement, that you could travel on that trail safely without any trip hazards. Uh, it's not going to be steeper than five percent grade, which means you climb or drive five feet for every one hundred feet. So barrier free means that you know, we designed that for an eight year old to an 80 year old that could travel on that without uh, fear of injuring themselves or hurting themselves. Then an improved trail goes down a bit that it would be lesser, it'd be less wide. So maybe it's only four to six feet wide. There might be a few obstacles, but the surface is still firm and stable, which means you could walk on it um, after heavy rain, because it wouldn't be muddy, there would no, not be any water running down it. Um, you may not be able to walk on it after a snow, because uh, it may not melt as fast depending on how cold it is, unless you decided to do any kind of sweeping or blowing it off, uh, which is you know something you talk about in policy. But uh, both of those indicate that they would be easy to travel on um, for mobility impaired folks. In in the developed world, it's uh, an accessible trail or an accessible pathway. So, Barry Free kind of implies that it meets ADA guidelines, Americans with Disability Act, but that ADA only applies to the built environment and not trail environments. So we use universal accessibility or barrier free as the terminology. Does that help explain? Yeah, I guess I was just more familiar with the ADA. Um, yeah. So think about it as an ADA type trail. OK. For firm and stable. And, and when the regulations first came out as firm, stable and slip resistant, but slip resistant got removed, uh, I don't know, maybe six, 10 years ago now out of the, so it's firm and stable. So that means you could, you could uh, a stroller could go under a wheelchair. And if you, the little front wheels of a wheelchair would not dig in and get buried in the surface. So there's, there's tests they do on surfacing to see how well they hold up to uh, wheelchair traffic and if wheelchairs turns on it and if they divot out the surface then it's not firm and stable. There's all kinds of, of uh, you know, tests on this stuff. So the question is, you know, what do we think it needs to be? If there was a sidewalk from here out along the roadway and sidewalks there to get to the developed area, you know, where is it important for people to have a barrier free access to cross over? So one one idea is here and this way back here is your two barrier free. Then you'd have an improved trail connecting those so people could still go for their walk. And people who are a little stronger could do this as well because it would still have opportunities for, you know, the whole loop, a figure eight loop. Which is a really nice setup here. I really like that. Attila, I would re really recommend that barrier free be that um, part that goes from bashes to the, you know, where um, from there all the way down to the um, where the dorm is going to be. That okay. place is there because we could at least connect it up with some um, sidewalks on NTU's campus. Okay. Or it could follow that trail up towards that lower point road. Um, south of our, I'm sorry, west of the housing, the other place you're kind of proposing with that housing development to the so, um, southeast in the lower right hand corner. Um, I'm going to share some pictures real quick, but you could kind of get an idea of um, what that trail currently looks like. Um, 
so it's probably about a good 25 yards away from the housing development uh, but that's the width okay it looks like uh let's see if i could scroll through a few um there's coming back there is a little bit of an incline um and then it goes a little bit further down in this area where it goes um a decline but it's not too much and you could see that the width isn't too bad it could fit maybe about three people walking side by side. Yeah, that's probably a. It's probably already six foot wide, and it's already got a. It's already got a pea gravel surface on there, right? I don't. I'm not a surfacing guy, but yeah, I think so. I would have said gravel. Yeah. Well, is it the round? Is it the round gravel you put on a flat roof? Um. Because it looks kind of loose. Yeah, I think so. It looks like it. So, so that's you what, that's, like a, that's like a you minimally improved trail where you've got. It's pretty good. It looks like you don't get too muddy walking on it, but uh, and it looks like it's got good drainage. I don't see any erosion in the center of it. I think I I traveled that with you last time I was there. I believe when the one time we drove around the UTV, yeah, saw some stuff. So you know that I know someone tried to improve this years ago. So it's a good start. The only day in this area, this is where the flooding happens. Okay, Daniel. Yes. You may want to ask the Lord Spicenti because I think. It, she was a part of the program that did the trail around the um, area there a few years ago. Okay. Yeah, I could ask her. And that trail is, uh, again, where? That's the loop around the part that was missing from the uh, drone footage. Uh, okay, so let me get to... Uh... All right, so where, where they were walking was somewhere in this, this piece here? Uh, yeah, they worked, yeah, right by where your hand was. They worked on the trail there. They, they used to have benches. To your, to your right a little bit more. They were walking up this way. Yeah, that's where they were. Okay. And then the, it is a kind of a decline going back towards NTU's campus from there, so that's kind of going downhill. Okay. All right, so accessible... Um, just gonna close that. Hang on a second. All right, so we're gonna put an accessible pathway. Um, I'll use the same terminology. Barrier free. And we're going to run it from. Let's all get cleaned up here. At least to here. And then barrier free. Um, It have to be starting from up here all the way down. From up the top all the way down to here, right? To connect. I think that whole thing is barrier free. Not improved. Well, improved. OK, that'd be improved. So OK, so barrier free is only this main connector that's from the schools. All right, so improved. Um, I can't remember what colors I used last time, but I'll figure that out. Um, was, we'll go this color. So improved would be um, on the existing pathway. Actually, we have to we barrier free this part here. Yes. I'll fix that. Yeah. On the okay. left side, you can still see the old airport. What was that, at, Leonard? See where the pink is kind of like has a sharp pointy edge. Yeah. It, on the north northeast side, it's it's right there. Mm. Over here. No, on the left top. 
Where that yellow, um, the, um, Kuro? Yeah, it's really a little bit on the left side. A little bit more left. A little bit down. You can see it kind of like a straight line right there. Really? That was the old airport. Wow. <laughs> it went all the way up to the four way by Crown Point Trading. No kidding. Wow. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. So we've now identified. Uh, Two loops, and then I'll imagine that we'd have another. Uh, we'd have another. We continue this way with a barrier free in this loop here, too, right? Yes. Or, or improve, improved rather. Okay. Let me. Um, I'm going to add that real quick. So keep on the same path. Improved. And then maybe this through thing here, right? Yes. OK. Is there an access point right there? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, we've been that way. Yeah, it looks like there might be a roadway down there, so I'm just going to leave that in for now because it does connect. Yeah, I don't know what the ownership is, but there's a couple of routes in here. That might make the most sense. And that goes down to the CCS, so that would that would be good. And then if you go further south, the other connector where it loops around and curves, that could go down towards the old boarding school track right down um, to your right. Oh, yeah, right. Plus, we need this connection here down to the cha to the chapter house, right? Yeah, there's there's one that stays on the other side of the fence that goes to the chapter, but then there's also a fence open. Trails converge. Um, so there's a side, trail right, in the center, right where your hand is. There's a trail there, and there's this one here. That looks like it's been really nicely bladed. Yeah, which, one is used, which one's used more? They usually go outside the fence and then do the loop on the road of the old BIA school. So, okay, so you're saying they follow this down here along the fence line and cross over to the BIA? Well, if you, if you go back up um, towards our trail is north. Yeah, right there. All of those trails that kind of converge on that one spot. Right yeah. Here? Yeah, right there's a fence. So usually they'll go through that fence if it's open and then they'll link to that big old roundabout because it's like a big old track in itself right there because that's all unoccupied in that middle area. So a lot of people will run on that trail and then go access. So this is an access point here? Yes. Okay. You ever walk on the other side by the um, chapter house? The one that that one that's on the other side of the fence that goes right up to it. Oh. And they have little barriers there. Remember? Mm -hmm. I'll we'll change water? that once I know more. But it's really right, right here. Yes. Okay. Who owns that, Leonard? Who keeps on closing that? That's BIA fence lane. Oh, it changed my thing. Okay, that's BIA access. All right, good. Properties, hang on. Um, it goes around the old community school. Oh, my um, I just disappeared. Okay. The airport was on the other side. <laughs> okay, so that's a BIA fence line? Yeah. We maintain it. OK. All right, so we need to have a trail that would so one of these got to draw. I don't do all of them need to drop down to do. Would you find the best sustainable one to get, get down here, right? The most level is that one right there. This one? That's the most level. The okay. most is probably the one right up the middle.
All right. And then from here, then we're, did you say we're going to come through here? Well, you could either go that way and then most of the people just cut through and then walk on the road or along the road to get to the BIE track. Okay. Or you can take that one road that looks graded that goes to the chapter house and then cross over. Um, so either route gets to it. OK, but would people from here ever walk to the chapter house? Not really, I don't think so. Well, what's in the, the evening, I see what's people the point walking of going there, right? <laughs> but one of the things we'll get to when we do the old BIA track too, is there's a lot of recommendations for parks, whether it's a dog park or some type of recreation area. Uh -huh. I'm sure somehow that could be the thing that links the two. So somehow if that could be planned for some type of park or recreation or shading yeah. area or whatever it might be. OK, so we just got to figure out how we um, if we're going to travel this way from this neighborhood down here, whether we're going to have a separate trail that crosses or cross the road and, and then, you know, come around this way. Um, what's the best way to get down here? So let's not worry about that just yet. Well, we know we got to get a connector going south. And plus, there's another trail um, to the right of all that. If you follow this, the path, um, the road to the right, if you're going east, there's another big trail that was marked as use. If you just keep on following, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. On the other side of this big old plot of land, there's this trail right here that goes directly east that could eventually be linked up to towering house and some of those sacred um, cultural sites that we we're talking about of how do we connect people to the um, hotel if somehow that hotel could be used as a way to link up because right there if you just keep on going east one ring houses You with me? Am I with you still? I'm trying to see what your map is. Should go too far over. Yeah, you're kind of way up high. That's right where 170 or 371 is. Okay, right there's 371 right in the middle. Yeah, if you could zoom in, I'm not sure where we went. Here's the BIA track down here. Okay. OK, yeah, perfect. So just right from it connects to that housing right there. There's a trail that goes directly from left to right. Yeah, right there. That's it. There's one that goes down and then towering house is just south right there going on that road. Oh, really? Yeah. Towering house is down here. It's somewhere in that area. Leonard could probably. Have, have a better eye for it. Somewhere somewhere right where you're at. That's where towering house is. OK, it's way, that, that's about a couple of miles, a mile, maybe. Way to the right. OK, so I thought there was a little ways. It's it's quite a ways. So so I guess my anyway, name is pointing right that here. Out. Yeah, that's it here. Yeah, that's it. Turn houses right there. OK. You can see the old Anasazi road going right through it. What is this road here? That's the old Anas. Well, that used to be the road to that site. OK. Um, but right going right, right through the um, Tarrant House Chakwin site, you can still see the Anasazi road. Oh, right. OK. Wow. You can see right there. You can see it going southeast. No. Uh, this one. There's the site. Right there is the road. Yeah, that's the, the highway a thousand years ago. Wow. All right. Um, good little history lesson there. All right. So, so uh, just to capture then this potential um, connecting this community over here to the BIA track, then too, right? Yes. And I think that's my main point with this trail is that it's so centrally located. We could tie it into a lot of the stuff we've been discussing so far with economic development, health, uh, community connections, 
minimizing automobile use, etc. What's the name of this neighborhood? Which one? Uh, the one I just put line through. Is that the trailer park? Tall yeah. House. Tall house. Tall house. It's on a lot, man. Land. Some some permit is making a lot of money. Probably a chapter house official relative. <laughs> somebody's, le somebody's leasing it up. <laughs> okay, there so was plan to do a highway across that area, but that kind of got scratched out. So connector there, I'll clean that up. All right, so then we still got to figure out, um, we're doing okay on time, but we still got to, um, yeah, whether we're going to do a sidewalk on here or something, but a way to get down here to the BIA track. That's still unresolved, and it's unresolved how we um, get down to the chapter house, either the existing bladed road. Is there any vehicle traffic on that now? No, they have uh, barriers on there. Some of those big old blocks of concrete, so. Okay. So for now, maybe we just put it down here and get community comment back on that. Yes. Okay. Because the big thing with that access point with BIA is that sometimes they'll be closed, sometimes it won't. Ah, uh, went too far. Okay. All right, looking good. So then um, let's talk about a couple of the things are um, trail erosion. We don't know until we get out there. We know we have some with all the flooding on it, but where are some, uh, are there any legal, uh, illegal or vehicle access sites here that you want to block? <clears throat> Up there at the north end of our trail, you'll have now yes. You're feeding out. Say that. Say that again. Right there. That's where they okay. enter with the car. So we need vehicle access there. Ah, oh, they all disappeared. I had them all saved. Okay. Okay. Any other? Let's let's keep, go through vehicle barricades or other ones. And then the other only place is the gate where the BI8 gate. That's wide enough where a vehicle can get through it, and they mainly use it to access um, the power lines to do repair. So then there's possibility. Down here or the other side. Right there. Right there. So wouldn't the Power line people not come up from this side? Uh, no, because it's gated off. It's fenced off. OK, so there's a gate somewhere out here already. Oh, yeah. OK, so we need a barricade right here at this other access point. OK. Other than that, um, the only access point is through the chapter house which I believe the chapter already put up some stone barricades, so many people don't drive on that graded area. OK. Um, but but it is a good parking lot. Yeah, but just to confirm, we need to make sure there's something down here, no vehicle access, so we'll just throw another one in here um, um, just to make sure we know. BIA did that, not us. Their friend was, not are their friends when they want them to be, right? <laughs> uh, uh, not south, um, west west of that last barricade. That's a road that goes up to the cell tower um, on the chapter, right by the chapter on the north west corner. That road is what goes up to the cell tower too. So that connects oh, okay. back up to that walking trail that goes down towards where we are doing the drone footage. Ah, uh -huh, okay. But if they get up on this, they won't get much further than. Um... The cell towers, right? I'll just no, drive. you could drive down. You could drive down. So we need a barricade then here? 
Well, it's um, on the other side of the fence. So if you go to the other side of that trail, yep, right there. Um, going south, there's a road that goes up that which NTU and the chapter both use to go up to those towers. OK, so there's a fence here, so you can't get a vehicle through anymore here. No. OK. But you can take that vehicle up to the cell towers. Right, so you can come in this way and go to the cell towers. Yes. OK, so these other roads in here, is this a, you know, this is part of your erosion control, the other dresses now, but, you know, conservation, rehabbing these roads, rehabbing the landscape may be part of this, eventually part of this project too. We talked about summer youth. You could do great work in restoring some of this stuff if it's not uh, significant anymore, but we're going to leave that alone for right now for things. So, so where are the trash sites and the, um, the uh, questionable behavior sites that are a problem? Drinking and smoking sites. You said there was parting and glass and broken glass and stuff. <laughs> OK, it's up uh, right before you get to the South Tower. I'm having to get it from Mary. <laughs> oh, she knows where they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put it up, Mary? I think the whole EPU is a problem. <laughs> Along that cliff line, I know some people right there at that point. Sometimes they'll right there, yeah. th there'll be people drinking or smoking right there, okay. right where the hand is. There's some a little bit because it's kind of around the corner from NTU, so some of the students might go over there. Yeah, I need a beer can icon here. What can I find? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How about we'll just put a, a martini? Coffee. A martini. There you go. <laughs> OK, we're going to just call it party area. And did you um, say more up on top by the South Towers? Oh. And then the other smoker, Attila, at the entry point from NTU's campus, just because our campus is a not, um, tobacco free campus. Yeah. So you'll have people smoking cigarettes right there. Right here? Yes. OK. Wow. They have to cross the fence line to smoke, though, right? Yes. Oh, wow. It's like going into Mexico. <laughs> so we'll have to have, we'll put a trailhead there and get it sponsored by Marlboro or something, right? <laughs> That would make the uh, anti-smoking people and DOH very happy, though, would it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I need an icon for that. That's gonna. But that is an issue of NTUs is that they either smoke at the entrance of the campus or right there. Oftentimes, we had students smoke at our campus and they got jumped by some of the locals. So if there is a designated place where there is a safe zone, I think that would be ideal for both NTU and the community. Are you talking civil war, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, good to know. Anything on a cultural or, uh, or uh, landscape or cultural sites, historic sites of concern that we need to make sure that are interpreted or protected in here? Leonard? I don't think in that area because it's all disturbed. <laughs> OK. All right, so uh, do we need any trailhead uh, parking areas that, you know, people some somewhere else might want to drive in and park at a trailhead to access this system? That's where I recommended that building up there that if we could work with fleet. Somehow if we could do a trailhead and parking area right there i think it would be beneficial okay but i i wouldn't want it to disconnect from if we put a sidewalk there where it'd be of hazard so i'm not sure if it's something we could collaborate with Denae college on or um speaking of the net college right on the right the west side of their campus they were they were planning a livestock some kind of training seminar place. I don't know what their plans are right now, but they were planning to do some kind of corral and 
how these things. I need to get an update on that. Are they able to do that in town? That's what we brought up at the chapter. We told them, you know, environmental issues. You can't just build right in the middle of town. NTU had the same problem. NTU wanted to do a, a livestock, uh, something. And we told Dr. Guy, you, you can't just build uh, things of that nature right in the middle of town. So I think they're going to be moving out to another uh, tribal, tribal ranch or somewhere. Yeah. So somewhere, somewhere here was a proposal for a training, cattle training or something in here, then agricultural thing in this area? Yeah, on the, okay. on the west side of the, uh, the Nick College. Okay. So somewhere in here, maybe even. Yeah, in that area. Okay. But the fence line separates that from where the trail is now, right? Yes. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Um, I'll just put an icon in here. Um, DC Ag Facility, question mark. And NTU's veterinarian program was behind in payment. <laughs> Because you, you come out expecting free service. <laughs> <laughs> you guys owe some 80,000, I think it was. <laughs> okay, other trailhead access. Would we want um, any kind of a trailhead with interpretive signage? You know, welcome, historic, you know, all the signage we put at a trailhead at any of the locations? Would you want it here? I think just on use, that designated smoky, smoking area would be a prime spot. Okay. Because that's kind of where all traffic flows through campus from both community and students. Would you say that's the most used part? Okay. And then down here, do we anything down to this one? You said that was a major access point, though, right? So you might want your trailhead signage there. If it's open, if it's open, depends on BIA. Okay. Well, I think your plan would be you want to work with BIA to put in a, you know, one of those kissing gates, which is you know you kind of zigzag through it to get through it, so it keeps out. Uh, it's still determined to be a fence line boundary, but it allows legal passage through the system. I, w I would recommend that area. And I yes. think we shared that in the trail development workbook. I believe there were some images of. Um, On the last page. I think so. Well, maybe they didn't make it in here. Well, it's the kind of standard, you know, fence line gate where you zigzag through. So you can still get a wheelchair through, you can still get a bike through, but you can't get a motorcycle through, you can't get a car through, and you can't get a cow through it. My concern would be if they have to maintain maintenance those um, those telephone lighting poles, they might need to get a car through. So true, then you could put a swing gate in there that'd be locked when you have a pedestrian walkthrough next to it. Yeah, I like, think that would work. Right. Okay, so I'm going to put a note here about a, a we'll put a, a way a trailhead here. Okay, and then I put uh, notes. And uh, cell tower for a uh, gate access. OK, the I, only two other places I could really think of Attila is if we wanted to promote and have people use the chap, um, chapter house parking lot, doing yep. it down there by that barrier. Or if we're focusing on that non barrier path that connects to NTU's campus, if we were thinking about people doing groceries is at the end of that trail right there. Right there. OK, I like that. And you can have many, you know, Trailheads can be walk up or, you know, but it just, it's, it's into a formal system that says, this is what it is. Here are the rules and regulations you need to abide by while you're in here. Right. Um, so I think it's um, useful to have it at various places. 
Mm-hmm. It'd be the same sign you'd put throughout the whole thing. Here are the rules and regs. Here's, you know, here's what the map looks like. So if you had this map, you'd have it at these different locations, so people would know their way around. Right. Uh, properties. Okay. Yeah, I'll clean that up. All right. Let's move on to um, connector trails. We've kind of figured it out, I think, here. Um, I'll probably change the colors on connectors so we know. But let's talk about uh, lighting. Do you want any lighting anywhere on this? My suggestion would be that main circle, that main loop, maybe every however many feet. Okay. So from bashes to NTU's two main access points, looping back around towards Dene College. So from here to there? I'm sorry, the red line? Yeah, just the red and line. Then, and then uh, down towards DC. And then um, if they're not that, that that's not high priority, the main part is from DC to NTU along that route right there going south. So so when the students walk from NTU to DC, are they coming in here and going this way? Or are they cutting across this way? Oh, there's another one. I guess there's another path. That one right there is what they use right there, Attila. Right here? Right in the middle. Because I think they have an open barrier right there, one of those ones where you walk back and forth. Because this, this seems to be the most logical pathway that would take you from this point across right to their the circle here. Yeah. Yeah. That right? That trips to that circle, that's the one where you walk through, go crisscross and zig. So that path is basically. Katie said yes. Okay. All right, so now now talking about lighting. Okay. Potential I'm sorry, lighting, Attila. Lighting this way. Instead of it, up. instead of it extending um, all the way right, they meet up at the corner where the drone footage start is. That's where they enter. So they go this way. Yes. And then what? Then, and then right there. Then how do they get to the building? They come down here. They come all the way down. So from that corner, from the drone, they go down, 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 and then they loop up all the way right there, um, right there to the parking. Oh, lot. really? Okay. All right. So we got to get rid of this line. Ah, stop. Got to find it now. There it is. Delete. All right, so I heard that it's going to go This way, of course, that's all screwed up line, but okay, I got it now. Here we go. What a cool planning tool. I need to get versed with Google, Google Earth. Earth is, uh, is fun and it's free. I'll clean that line up. Okay, so that's the route then. Um, NTU. D. 
All right. So now back to the lighting question. So lighting would be. I might just do a yellow line to show where you want to light. So lighting could be if people would people walk to Bosch's in the evening. Yes. OK, the lighting could potentially be along here. To the school. And then back over here to. That's, I guess I got to wrap this back around here like that. That could be a. The lighting piece. Yes. I'll draw a yellow line here so you can see what I'm saying. Um, how's our all our uh, UNM folks? You guys still awake out there? Yeah, still awake. Okay. I had a blackout and my whole computer went dead and it cut me off and everything, but I'm back on. Oh goodness. I dozed off. <laughs> You you blacked out, S Sally, or the computer did? No, <laughs> <laughs> it was electric electricity out. Okay. Oh, I got your camera back on though. Yeah, I got them back on. <laughs> All right, so lighting will be something like that then, right? Yes. Oh, I should have made it continue. Hang on. Um, property. Oh, too many dots. All right, I'll clean that up. Know what I'm doing. There okay, was, so that's kind of the lighting route. There was mention by community members of wanting to do exercise past five during winter or, you know, into the night um, around the BIA track or yeah. on this one where the two mentioned. So I'm not sure if it's not done on the BIA track that if somehow that entire loop could somehow eventually be closed with lighting. OK. Um, but if possible, you know. Yeah, I think this could be done by filling out that loop that goes from um, trailhead access to the Martini to DC. <laughs> that area, if that one could be um, lighted eventually. OK, so lighting this all the loop as well, right? Possibly if we don't end up doing BIA or if we get feedback that, you know, that could be a possible exercise okay. loop. And then I knew I know there are some individuals who work at NTU's campus that work um, live in that housing right there to the right that um, walk. And then that's where the individual had stubbed their shin on a divider or whatever it was. OK. So I guess it'd be good to ask. Um, uh, I'm curious now. Well, look at this map. Um, yeah, we would still use this one. Well, both of these would have to stay in place, wouldn't they? I mean, you could do your fitness thing just around this loop here, too. Yeah, that could be an option. Just a small fitness. What does that look like mileage wise? Let's path that real quick, just for the hell of it. Um, Cool. So that is. You can make that a half mile loop almost or it's four tenths of a mile loop, so that might be good for a couple of exercise stations if that was an option. Yeah. OK. Okay, got that captured on there as well. All right. Um, interpretive signage. Are there any stories on this you'd want? I mean, would is Towering House avail visible from anywhere along this way? No. Okay. But that was one of the discussions we had with NTU of possibly doing the augmented reality since it is the um, education trail where we could identify vegetation along one of those routes and then use it um, use it as an educational tool. OK. 
Um, um, the other place was TP Trail, which might be kind of far out there. I know that here we'll have high reliability with the internet towers. Yeah. And, you know, we would be able to ping and then use all NTU's resources. But this would, was where we were talking about possibly doing the traditional plant um, app that you could download and then learn about the different vegetation that's along the route. Um, possibly if it's low light, light, um, possibly even using it to use that technology to look up at the constellations. And then learning yeah, about the okay. constellations within the area. So I just put a, a thing in the middle, augmented reality loop for now. That that's what this lower loop would be, maybe, right? Yes. That's kind of a cool idea. Okay. Um, what about spaces for benches, contemplative spaces, discovery place spaces? Does that make sense anywhere along this way? So as a refresher, um, discovery place spaces. Um, even if you were walking with uh, a, a caregiver was walking with kids to the grocery store, you know, you might have spread out along the trail little places to uh, the kids could explore, you know, uh, play in a tunnel or play on some rocks or play with some logs or something in different different spaces to entertain them. So it's all, every time they're on a trail, it's kind of a discovery and that's just not just hiking because kids hate to hike. So that's a discovery play place concept as opposed to a big shiny playground. The other one was a, the, the benefits of uh, nature for mental health. And are there spaces, um, you, one could argue that the Martini area is probably a place for some mental health. That's where, would, bad. that's where I would recommend a bench. Okay, at the party area? <laughs> <laughs> where and what about uh there was a bench out there somewhere wasn't it when we, when we drove it last time or walked it there was a bench by a tree somewhere yeah the bench is um where it crosses over so above the augmented reality loop on that crossing trail the bench is up here somewhere uh, if you scroll up to actually where the trail it crosses over, yeah, it's about somewhere halfway in there, right by that tree, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think well, I remember that. To your, to your left, it's a little, about halfway between there and then where it connects over with that red line. So there's a bench a bench location there, okay. Um, my bench disappeared. Yeah, perk bench. They didn't take it. Oh, there it is. OK. Can you uh, zoom out a little? I want to make sure you're on the right one. Yeah. I can put it there for now, and I can move it. It might be on the one that's lower than that. Yeah, it's it's on the tra um, trail lower than that, the bottom crossover. This one? Yeah, right next to that tree. It was out here, wasn't it, maybe? It's about right there, right by the tree. If you go north. Oh, I'm sorry, right along that road. Right there here somewhere. Uh, north a little bit. On the other side of the trail. Yeah, it's about right there. Okay. Other places for benches or shade. That actually was a nice little spot. I like that spot. So that was, it's almost a contemplative spot. Yeah. Yeah. And if so possible, if it could help mitigate some of the flooding that goes to the lower portion of it, whether that's, like I say, in the community garden done by IHS or a rock space that helps kind of slow down that water flow. I think that would be a prime area to kind of help prevent a lot of the flooding that help, happens more to the east. Little Dharma initiative. 
-hmm. Okay. Um, But that's, that's what I'd hope to see there, just because I know some of the people use it from IHS, and if somehow that health element could be incorporated into it, this could be a nice little venture off of the premise of IHS where activities could take place. Right. Okay. And you said there's the erosion is draining which way on here? So it's draining towards? Um, DC and the housing. Draining this way? Um, down um south this way so draining this way yes all south okay so it's coming right through this area here then probably right where the um the trails on the far right kind of intersect kind of going down in that area you'll see some flooding yeah okay So somewhere near flooding mitigation? Yes. OK. OK, cool. So other places for uh, any interpretive sign besides augment, I think augmented reality already catches that for the most part, that loop. So maybe that's all the interpretation you need there. So anything else on that that we need to think about? Just that there's signage along each trailhead, right? Yeah, there's always sign, but then we have directional signage too. So every intersection would have directional signage. Yes. So I would put those icons at every intersection showing here's, you know, direction to this or that or whatever it is, custom icon. So we would have one, um, for example, here maybe. And I'd have a bunch of those that, you know, down here at the intersection. OK. The last and thing I could think of is maybe having a access point or um, over there by the Diné College since we don't have anything where it kind of loops where our lighting goes. Yeah, my lighting, uh, yeah, I need, I didn't finish that loop correctly. So this, this one's got to wrap around here. Mm -hmm. I got uh, my let me I'll make that. Uh, properties. But other than that, I think we crossed a lot of the. Um, the things that were brought up from the community within this in regards to both, you know, exercise, but then also safety. You know, I think a lot of what we contributed today really speaks to that. OK. Sure. So Leonard. yes, I know. Yeah, I'll have to do a connector that actually this this thing here, I think I stopped it here and I need to continue. I'll clean this up. It'll continue all the way down here and loop in this way. Yes. So I'll go back and I'll clean the lines up and put them exactly on top of the map in the right places uh, and try to name everything. So what we did the other day, just for refresher, so what what we're intending on doing for the public consumption of all this is, for example, the other day we did. Um, Mesa Trail, where's Mesa Trail? So this was what Mesa Trail looked like for everyone where we talked about lighting and I'm going to probably change that and put a blue line or, you know, a, a yellow line for lighting around it. We showed a connector trail here, a potential connector. Then today we show this connector, so I'm going to make the colors the same. And then we talked about having this uh, showing the map, and then we show the um, and the purple line here. The blue line was a pipeline, which I should do in black or brown. Um, but we're going to have uh, a map and then have graphics around it, a bubble, you know, showing that here's the improved section, here's the unimproved section barrier-free, um, so all the colors will match in the whole map. 
Uh, and then this one was kind of a cool idea we talked about. If you were on the, we talked about having um, these discovery play, pay, play spaces along this section here, which would take in um, a, sh a shade structure, maybe a resting space, uh, and a kind of a pocket park. So vegetation, we talked about the need for shade and trees. So that was the idea along here. It'd be shade and trees and a play structure, maybe a bench and lighting for everybody. Um, and we didn't even bring up that today. Is there a need for any kind of, you know, kind of uh, reintroduced shade trees or canopy anywhere along this system? And would there be a way to, you know, deliver water to it to help it to thrive? That might be a good part where that flood mitigation is taking place if that could okay. capture the rest of it. Yeah, because you could do swales and catch some of that water for trees and planting. Right. All right, so we're going to throw a couple of uh, trees in for that area just to show it's possible. Uh, and really, that's all susceptible to flooding, that whole line right there, Attila. Okay. Plantings. Plantings. Uh. Cool. Put a couple of those in there. So that's kind of our idea. Uh, any any thoughts from our uh, UNM folks? What do we miss? Did you guys decide on what kind of surfacing you're going to use? Um, we dis we decided that um, we, we will likely never see concrete and asphalt out of here because it's not against it's kind of against what they're thinking. But the red line here would be a barrier free pathway. So that would be uh, probably a stabilized crusher fine material. And the improved surfaces could be uh, a crusher fine surface, but without the stabilization bit into it. So it still have a, a level smooth surface, a few obstacles here and there, but the only piece that is going to be 100% a, a barrier free is really from this point here the Shepherd's Crook area down here to connecting to the college would be barrier free. And then ideally they would then plan a sidewalk improvements to get to the hotel bashes and, and the hospital. Now we could, you know, the augmented reality loop, other one, if you do fitness stations, you could all the signage, you can still do incorporate the motivational prompts um, healthy messaging, healthy recreation messaging along here, which I think we should do in the entire trail system. And we will have a separate, I think, conversation about uh, probably a, a, after we finish the this mapping exercise for the four sections, we'll do it a separate meeting on on signage. You know, what's the style you want to do to have some concepts together? How do you want to do uh, healthy messaging, motivational messaging? Um, what are some of those ideas that can be shared with uh, the community and put into the plan? Yeah, I think that's kind of the concept with all of these too, is that, you know, I know for sure they were talking about having different levels per trail, like maybe the BIA is the really easy, rubberized, anyone could access type of trail. But if within our signage, we connect that towards this educational trail, and it's maybe a little bit uh, a step up, you know, people who don't have to have a cane or whatever it might be could then go north towards the educational trail. But if they wanted to keep on going, we could then connect them up to the Mesa Trail, you know, keep running and then you'll have you'll be running up in the clouds, you know, the oh, next yeah. Level. So that's where the, the um, came out within the focus groups within the community, too, is how can we really connect these so you're maybe using them in different areas, but it's per use or how how well you could exercise. So I think that's a good reason why we should incorporate the connectors is 
We want to be able to give people options of if you want to stay here, you're fine, do your loops. But if you want to go and challenge yourself to the next stage, here's this education trail. Or if you want to go to the extreme, go south towards TP. You know, I think that's something that's going to come up. And how do we best address each of those users? Yeah, I like that. So the question about surfacing the uh, well, I think this is our next meeting schedule for next week. I think might be uh, this one. Um, well, maybe it's not, but anyway, the fitness th this is used quite regularly. And if we wanted, and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but if we wanted something for year-round use in all weather, maybe the idea is to do a rubberized surface on this. That's easy for walking, but it could be uh, plowed or swept after snow so people could use it at all seasons if they can't get on the, the rest of the system so that's uh, another meeting on that one it might be a quicker one because it's really a focus area but we really i think we can really figure out what the connection route is in here mm -hmm. so if you want to play with google earth you can just download it. it's a free free program and you can s scroll around here and really get a look at what's going on um the question though is is that this is a 2016 map they're using. And um, it's, it's going to not be very current. So there might be new things. So I think, uh, Daniel, if you can get your drone drone person to, to maybe fly this corridor here and fly some of this stuff to get a sense of what it looks like now as opposed to what it did. Because I think some of these buildings are not even gone or um, that were in here before. Or maybe new stuff's already moved in, but getting a better sense of what this looks like from a 2020 view would be really helpful. Okay. Are you planning to do a walkability workshop on on the ground? I heard last week. I heard you say something about actually. Um, now you've got um, the drone and you've got Google Maps, but um, are you planning to walk it and? make note of things like last week i think uh, daniel you're talking about that some areas are real steep and that doesn't show up on these things but if you were walking it it would i was just curious about that um yes sally i i i think there's two parts of this um as they do more walk you know more sidewalk improvements um we we were doing some walkability audits, trying to do um you know kind of do a quick video training and send people out on their own to do walk audits on certain areas. We kind of did it for the whole thing, but that could help in the neighborhoods. But I do plan on as soon as I'm able and allowed to go out there for a couple of day trips and do a, a in depth trail assessment on where the steep areas are uh, and and look at it from a sustainability perspective. And you know what needs a reroute because it's too steep or it's eroding. So that's a strong part of my skill set. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that as soon as we're allowed to visit. Would you guys be able to join us for that, Sally? Sure. And I think if you have uh, your local people on that as well, because yeah. there are things that culturally. Uh, may not be real explicit, but people know about that they would say, you know, we really shouldn't go that way or and and you think about it more when you're on the ground than you do when you're looking at it this way. So and uh, Latasha, I don't know if you know that both um, Sheldon and Latasha um, as part of our groups, Latasha is has her degree in planning uh, from the Indigenous Planning Center. And uh, Sheldon has his community health education and is now enrolled in that uh, walkability, walking uh, university. So both of them have experience in doing that kind of planning for indigenous communities. So I'm sure that um, as soon again, it's what Attila, Attila says, and that's we when we can, when we can travel again. Yeah. So, Sure, we. I think that um, we have quite a few of our group that would be interested in participating, and we've done lots of walkability workshops for uh, this kind of, um, you know, indigenous communities and rural communities. So, yeah, maybe yeah, the next phase. Just, uh, yeah, maybe the next phase until it could be two parts where we both present these results, but then also do the walkthrough, kind of provide that opportunity for people to participate. 
Yeah. Just because I know even during the focus groups, there's a lot of people who wanted to participate in this right. part. Yeah. But like some of the elders, they don't have internet. Um, that would be a good opportunity for them to come and, you know. Yeah, people something. really like to participate, and they start they start seeing the land in a different way when you're looking at it about, should we put a sign here or a bench here, or what about the the view or the the contemplative area and everything so that's right um, you know it's really important to i think to do that um i guess the other thing is and i i didn't hear the maybe that you talked about the senior center is the senior center anywhere near these trails yes <laughs> uh the senior center is um if you go by the chapter house yeah and then you follow down that road Okay. Yeah. Going back towards the um, the housing area, Attila. Keep on yeah. going. Going okay. south or yeah, west? Yeah. Keep on or going uh, west. Keep on going west. Right there in the bottom lower half hand corner with the orange roof. Oh, we're passing it. It's kind of in the middle now. There's the senior yeah. center right there. This one? Yes. Because one of our uh, one of the communities we're working with, um, the seniors really wanted their tra a trail that would go from the senior center to the chapter house. That was just really important that they improve that trail so that they could walk to chapter meetings and things like that. So um, I just thought I'd ask that, mention that. Yeah, there's a sidewalk. I believe that's a sidewalk path that goes directly on that road from the elder center up to the chapter house. So it's, you basically see it all in this frame, chapter house in the upper right hand corner, elder center. Um, you're actually on the rehab facility, um, Attila. The one with the orange roof is the elder center. Yeah, right oh, there. Let's look at that one. All right, so let's just uh, distance. And um, I believe the majority of the elders that we spoke to at the Elder Center, uh, they primarily use the BIA track. Okay. So it would connect that way to um, the other elders said they use the BIA track and then the. That's a quarter so mile. Could be that link. Quarter mile, it's only a quarter mile walk from there to the. Although it'd be interesting, I mean, you know, depending on. I know one of the unique things we that Cuba did years ago was, you know, they bladed that little quarter mile loop just around near the senior center and started the walking group with seniors, which is totally cool. You know, is there a way to think about getting a connector path anywhere through here to get to the BIA? So that's something we'll talk about the BIA track. Are there, are there ways to get a connector, you know, either down somewhere along here to get to the track without? Mm -hmm. But if you're if you're driving here for the senior center. Um, I imagine you could either go to the trailhead parking here. So that's probably that more focus group conversations with the group. When the seniors um, get together, they they have you know quite a few things at the senior centers, and and the, especially their lunch or their bingo or whatever they have, and so you have the social support already built in, and they are all walking at about the same speed. And so there may be some doing it individually, but it's a nice group activity. Uh, and we're finding it a lot of the groups that we work with, they really, the seniors really like to get out and walk and either after lunch or before, and they make it a routine every, every week, a uh, certain time of the day or something. You, could just, you mean possibly could design a loop in here too, down this way and a loop this way back to the center. A lot of them use that loop right there going south towards the post office. Um, the only reason that got some marks was somebody had died along that trail, I believe, from exposure. Well, there was a murder. Murder was, took place there. Yeah, that was brought up in the focus groups. But a lot of people use that trail going from the Elder Center south because then there's the post office right there with the blue blue roof. That's the post office? Yes. And then you link down, there's TP Trail right there at the bottom of the map. Oh, yeah. Carl uses that path, doesn't he? I know that guy named David. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah, two of the elders use that trail right there. 
for sure that we know. That's a third of a mile. So you, you can make that loop back and get a, you know, potentially a, you know, some sort of a half mile loop. Somehow back to the loop and have a nice little, you know, that's a half mile loop. That might be kind of a cool separate project. Just to think about it for a senior loop. Good thoughts, Sally. Yeah, thank you, Sally. Sure. Everybody, well, they could have a, a mail run every day where they all go get their mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel, you may want to talk to Best Just Chili on that one. Okay. Uh, potential senior loop. All right. What else is there? I think we got everything on this one. So yes, we've got to do. Uh, so thinking about walk audits. Um, I I like the thought, and maybe um, the UNM folks. We can think about um, what can we do to make sure these these communities have good access to this system. So it's that you know it's that half mile metric. Uh, proximity and awareness. So how do we think about educating folks when this is built out? How do they get to it? Um, I'm actually doing a webinar on this on Thursday on proximity and awareness. Uh, most people uh, don't know where the parks and trails are, if, even if within a mile or home. So a lot of this is going to be about as it gets improved, um, how do you educate your community about what's available to them? So you change their behaviors and they know it's out there and it's not a, a you know, scary place with party areas and and uh, questionable activities and behaviors. So I think we got okay, a great help. Think about that'd be great. Another thing is that then that's that's why the walking groups or the walk, the social support is real important because some people don't want to go by themselves if they're walking for recreation or for exercise, but they'll walk in a group and so having a group. But another thing is, is uh, when you were talking about signage and signage is so important, but at each one of these entry points is making sure that there's some point of decision prompt, a sign, that says, instead of going the short way, go this way and get some extra steps in or something like that. So be thinking about a place where somebody would be making a decision about um, taking their car or walking to bashes or you know something like that. So those are some of the things to just kind of keep at the back of your mind. They're not major things, but they're important in the overall um, thought process. Yeah, I think it's really important though, because I think if we have a public health goal for this project, I think that uh, points of decision prompts and, and even even every trail should talk about, you know, here's um, here's the width, here's the uh, here's the slope you're going to be walking on so people understand what they're out there. Um, even in the heat, we could even put a thermometer out there. I, I think one of the smartest things White Sands National Park does is is at the trailhead when you're going out in the sand they say you know don't go out here when it's above 102 degrees or whatever and there's a thermometer that's four foot diameter circle that tells you it's 110 don't go out here so anything we can do to help people understand what they're getting into um before they're used to it and as daniel alluded to you know talking about the um the uh, step up from the easiest to the more difficult is is a good. When we did Albuquerque prescription trails, everything I did was a quarter mile loop or less, and you could be walking by your car every loop. Oh, I can go into the loop. I'm still near my car. I can do it in a loop. Uh, I never sent anybody into the foothills. I never sent anyone to the volcanoes because that wasn't my audience. My audience was those who couldn't walk to their mailbox. So, you know, always know who we're designing for. And, and as we build the system out, I think that's going to help us talk about the increased uh, increased uh, challenge on the different systems here. But while still serving a tra all active transportation purpose, so cool stuff. All right, well, it's after five. 
So uh, next Tuesday again, we'll be doing um, BIA trail or TP trail. I'll have to look at the notes again. Um, but there's two more sections that we'd like to complete. After those are done, I think it'd be wise to mock them up and then do that walking trail with the community and UNM guests um, and our steering committee and then just kind of detail it that way. But I think that would be the next steps is finishing the last two trail, mocking them up and then presenting it to the community, both within a walking workshop or having that poster board display as well. So agreed. Uh, anything else before we head out, Leonard? Um, if you get a chance, talk to um, Felicia Tribune on the south side of the community school, the new one right there. She saw Bigfoot right there. So <laughs> she'll she'll swear to it. And wasn't her on husband the, Mark? <laughs> on, on the south side of the NTU campus, there's a trail from east to west. They call that the uh, Skinwalker Alley. So those things need to be brought up to. Okay. We're not alone. <laughs> Skinwalker, which is Skinwalker Alley? You can see um Kind of on the south side of the campus, there's a trail. There's a lot of sightings through there. Is that right? OK. Well, that's good yeah. to know. <laughs> and it's no joke. They are everywhere. You see it's going towards the Crump, uh, Crump Point Chapter House, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chapter House probably going to be torn down. We're going to build a new one by the uh, old police station. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, we could talk about that next one. Yeah, we'll save that for another conversation. Thank you, everybody. Um, next Tuesday at uh, three again, we'll, we'll schedule that. And then we're yep. going to, um, Attila, if you could get these videos to me, somehow that sh file sharing you sent last time didn't work, but um, I want to put these on YouTube and then share them again. Still having some problems okay. with the website going, but we want to get those going as well. I'll, soon. Yeah, I'll, I'll check into that. Okay. Good. Thanks, All everyone, right. for joining us again. Appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for the invitation. Yeah, thank you. Go, go net.